All right, cool, cool. Now I'm gonna take a brief second off from playing Hardcore Mecha to kind of give you the news on Path to Nowhere. Uh, the next event is gonna be opening up on the 7th of February, which is the Path of Ashes, which is then gonna lead onto the Tide of Ashes, which is the guild event that's gonna be opening up soon. Uh, the Path to Ashes is a limited time event that's gonna start from the 7th of February. It's gonna end on the 17th, so about 10 days, give or take. Uh, Taking part into taking part in the Path of Ashes will now be about 320 cubies, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, aside from that, there's no other kind of like news about what Path of Ashes actually entails, other than the cubes itself. So we gotta wait to see uh, how that kind of turns out in a way. For the next part of the whole event, uh, the Tide of Ashes is a guild event. It'll last the same amount as uh, Path of Ashes, a uh, 10 days total. Again, when it comes to the guild content, uh, I, I, I was saying, hey, you know, we need more guild content or we need something that, and we need more content in general. Uh, I was talking so, to some players in the Discord itself. I'm usually not in Discord, but I was kind of curious, you know, like, hey, you know, how's this event gonna be turning out? Uh, maybe bouncing off ideas about what kind of other content would be cool for, for the guild. Uh, overall, one of the things I, I was told is that, um, from my friend Miri, is that during the initial Chinese release, there was this bug. I'm not sure if they fixed it or not, but this is kind of like a heads up. If you guys are in a guild that's dead, I would switch guilds right now. And if you guys are looking to kick players out, I would do it now as well. For the primary reason is that, again, um, my friend Mary was telling me that during the initial Chinese release, you couldn't leave a guild and you couldn't kick players out <laughs> during the whole 10 days. So keep that in mind, uh, either do a quick cleanup of your guild or start recruiting uh, before before the 7th. You got about like eight days to do it, eight or nine days, give or take. Um, as for what's going to be available for the Tides of Ashes, I'm going to be going through the rules in just a second. But this is uh, one of the main rewards for doing Tides of Ashes is uh, new S rank crime rants for your characters. But that's the overall gist of it. Uh, from here, I'm going to be heading over into the kind of like the rules of play for the event or for Ties of Ashes in general. Cool, cool, cool. Now for the actual rules of play, I'm just going to like break it down as simply as I possibly can. Uh, any kind of questions, ask me down in the comment section below. All right, let's begin. Uh, the level of challenge, again, when it comes to like the level of challenge, the primary thing that you got to keep in mind is that you only get three attempts a day and uh, basically your guild will have its own map. So every guild is going to be a little bit different. Just depends on the only difference between each of the guilds is basically how you're going to approach each of the situations. Basically, that's the only thing you only get three attempts a day. And after you use up your three attempts, that's it for the day. Basically, <laughs> uh, repeated challenge rules uh, again, because there's an uh, as you're going through each day, you know, you only get three attempts you need to have a lot of teams. So basically, one of the things I would suggest, if you don't have that many characters built, uh, you don't have many uh, sinners built, uh, try to sh throw in your weakest sinners first, and then if you're seeing something that's gonna be a little bit more challenging, use your best sinners for those challenges. Uh, because as soon as you use a team up, uh, that's it. You can't use them for the other two uh, subsequent challenges. Because remember, you, you get three entries, but you can only use them you're gonna use one team per entry. So you either have to space them out a little bit, or like I said before, um, I mean, spacing out is like, instead of using a full set of six uh, characters, you use four or three, just, <laughs> uh, you don't even wanna space them out a little bit. Or if that's not the case, then send your weakest team first uh, to try to take out the easier challenges and then save your strongest team for the end. Give or take. Uh, that actually knocks off uh, level one and two. Again, the, the first, uh, the challenge stuff, it's kind of basic stuff, is for the guild. You can, go, you can go through it with them. And I already went through the second stage. Now, the challenging, uh, the Apostle Core, it says that there are three special uh, Apostle Cores in the Tide of Ashes, the Sandstone Core, the Electromagnetic Core, and the Blazing Core. Only by finding and breaking these cores will you be able to challenge the culprit of the Tide of Ashes, the, Ap the Apostle of Ashes. So basically that's kind of like the whole gist of the 10 day event is that uh, with your guild's help, uh, you're going to be able to go in every day, three challenges a day, and you need to find those three cores, destroy them so you can uh, attempt to kill the boss, the Apostle of Ashes. GG. As for <laughs> number four, 
And it's saying challenging the Apostle of Ashes. It says the damage dealt to the Apostle of Ashes will be recorded for each challenge when you and or other secret, secret society members challenge the Apostle of Ashes again. All the damage previously dealt will be counted. It's kind of like a world boss. When the Apostle of Ashes, uh, when the Apostle of Ashes HP reaches zero, it is defeated and enters a deeper spiritual dive. As the level of the spiritual dive increases, the power of the Apostle o of Ashes also seems to get stronger. So please be prepared. So each time you kill the boss, it, it'll get more challenging. So kind of keep that in mind as you're going through each of the iterations. So that uh, maybe, for example, maybe you want to have your the weakest members go in first, try to eliminate them. And then like, okay, it's eliminated, throw in your strongest members and then keep going with it. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a collective thing anyways. So it's just going to keep that in mind when you're going through each of the iterations of the boss. It, it is going to get harder and harder. So... So after the, uh, defeating the Apostle of Ashes for 25 times, the current, tide of a, the current Tide of Ashes is defeated and the Apostle of Ashes will not dive deeper until the next Tide of Ashes event. So it only goes up to 25 stages of difficulty. More than likely, like once you get to like stage 20, 25, you're probably going to hit some uh, well territory. So don't feel bad if you can't get any deeper into the overall aspects. Uh, just try to do as much as you can because uh, during the Tides of Ashes, you get currency that is used to buy those S rank crime brands that I was talking about before. On to the next one. Cool, cool, cool. Now, rules six and seven, I'm gonna explain rules six and seven, they're kind of dumb, but I'm gonna explain those in just a second. But overall, uh, spiritual enhancements are basically for the president or the deputy of the of your guild, basically. They're, they're basically like uh, buffs that you can give to your to the entire guild as you're going through the iterations. It says the, the buffs can help all the members during the Tides of Ashes, helping the secret, secret society finish the Tides of Ashes faster. That's basically what, all it's for. So as you're going through it, um, the president of your guild or the deputy can help you guys out a little bit. So it's kind of like maybe you will be able to get in between 20 and 25, but it's going to be a little bit harder. But in general, that's kind of cool that they actually give you buffs. Now, rule six and seven, uh, I, I, I don't know who wrote these rules but rule six and seven are the exact same thing all right <laughs> i think seven was supposed to say something else because it's notes for rewards but basically i'm just going to read number seven because it says exactly what number six says it says during the tides of ashes you can set up so you can set two of your own sinners to be assisted sinners so this can help out players who players in your guild that don't have a lot of sinners built properly you can set two of them out as assistants and then the other players in your secret society can deploy them while they're uh, challenging in the Tides of Ashes events. You can you, you can also deploy any one assistant center from other players in your secret society. So this kind of says that you can deploy two of yours to kind of help out the guild. And like basically like put them in the and the pick them up line, right? But you can only pick one center to pull from those. Like I set out two, but you can only pick one, basically. And then it, it, it kind of falls into me as well. Well, let's say a, a friend put in two centers. Well, I can only pick one of those two centers. Basically, that's what it's saying. And rule number six, six, rule number six says the exact same thing. So I think that rule seven was supposed to say something else entirely. Okay, cool. Moving on. <laughs> Ash exchange. Now, this is kind of like, uh, it kind of details a little bit about the shop. It says when Tides of Ashes is open, the Ash Exchange in the Exchange Center will be available, hence the shop. Uh, the Ash Core you obtain in the, in the Tides of Ashes can be exchanged for limited rewards there. In the current uh, Ash Exchange, three new Kramas will be available for the exchange. It says right here that, uh, I can't read the, the other part of it. Oh, here we go. It says, uh, I, <laughs> I don't think the Ash Exchange may change for different types of ashes so it says right here i'm, I'm not sure that, like if the currency is going to be different between each types of ash in which it, in, in which case it is uh it, I will, it would be nice to know that like hey by the way uh whatever currency you own during this iteration of uh types of ashes uh, you got to use it all up before the event is over uh, it doesn't say if that currency can carry on to the next one. It just says right here items in the maybe change uh, Items in the exchange shop may change for different tide events ash cycles 
but it, it also says uh, exchange for limited rewards there in the current Ash exchange. So I'm not sure if the currency will carry over. I know, I know for a fact, it says it right here, that the rewards will be different through each iteration. But it doesn't say if I can, like, let's say, I picked up the S-Rank Crime Brands. It says only three were going to be available, but if I pick up those three Crime Brands and then the rest of the currency, if I save it, will it carry over to the next uh, Ties of Ashes? If you guys know that for a fact, like if you guys are have played the, the initial iteration, let me know. So that, okay, now we know that we should spend all of the currency during this event because the next event is going to be different. In general, that is it for the Tides of Ashes. I think it's pretty cool. I do like the fact that they're adding content. Uh, again, I was in the, I was in the Discord uh, earlier today, and I was just kind of like you know shooting the shit with those guys, and then I was asking them, hey, well, wouldn't it be cool to have? I mean, the fact that they're releasing Tides of Ashes, wouldn't it be cool to have like other types of content? You know, uh, <laughs> um, some of them were like, oh, well, if you try to do something different, you know, it'll probably turn into whale territory, but etc etc you know if you guys have any like thoughts like hey you know like this would be cool because again we were sh uh, shooting the shit um talking about oh what about guild war or like guild contents you know like or you you have like a world boss it's similar to this but it's like a like like a weekly a weekly world boss i'm not sure if ties of ashes or i mean not yeah i'm not sure if ties of ashes is gonna be like a regular thing where like every 10 days it's gonna be available or every event or etc you know because it only shows it's only available for 10 days I'm, I'm not really sure if it's going to be available like every 10 days like after this you know initial 10 days the next the next 10 days is going to be available or we're going to have this 10 days then an event after the event uh after that event then we'll have another ties of ashes and then we'll have another event etc you know it's going to just like circulate uh, if that's the case, it's not bad. <laughs> if it circulates every other event, after every event, it's not bad. <laughs> it's not going to be bad at all. Uh, that should be it. Again, I, I don't want to like push this uh, any further than I have to, but that should be it just in, in general aspects of uh, the, you know, the Ties of Ashes. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this again. I'm going to press this again. Just in case, again, my friend Miri said that Path to Nowhere was actually review bombed in China because of this. So I'm hoping that they fixed it, but in case they haven't fixed it, uh, you guys, if you guys have a guild, kick as many members out as possible, because you like again, if that if that bug still exists when they release Ties of Ashes, you you can't kick players out and you can't recruit players during those. I I, I mean like, not recruit, but you can't uh, leave a guild during those ten days. So. You basically just want to like clean house and then recruit as many players as possible. And if you're in a guild that you don't want to be in, uh, I will leave right now and then join a different one that you want to be in. Because again, if that bug is still there and, and all that shit is real, uh, you're going to be stuck there. And, and of course, if you don't have active members, you won't be able to recruit any for a while. So again, that's it. Just want to say that and uh, that should be it. I really hope you guys uh, found this helpful. Uh, if you guys, again, if you guys have played the original Chinese release, you kind of know how all this is working out. Please let me know down in the comment section below. It's, it'd be nice to know a little bit more about what's, uh, what, what we can expect, especially with the currency. Uh, again, I hope you guys found this helpful. I'll see you guys next time. Take care, guys.